Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 fragrances for autumn. And I made a video like this last year. I think I chose 12 fragrances in that video and it was incredibly popular. So I'm going to link it in the cards above and also in the description box below in case you do want to go and check it out. I still do have those fragrances from that video and I still do wear those fragrances and enjoy them, but I just don't want to repeat myself. So I'm going to choose 10 entirely different fragrances this autumn to talk about. So the ones that I'm going to talk about this year are all loosely based around the notes of amber and vanilla. So these are my 10 choices. I'd like to say as well that these are all quite affordable. Even the more expensive ones you can generally buy smaller bottles of and they will be under £50 for sure. I think there's only one in this video that is priced over £50. So hopefully I've considered more, more affordable options. And actually some of these fragrances are under £15. So Hopefully there's something for everybody here. So the first fragrance I'm going to talk about is actually one from Floris and it's called A Rose Four. So I bought this fragrance back in the summer and I remember thinking to myself, what am I doing? Why am I buying an Oud fragrance in the summer? I'm not going to be able to wear this right now because it's too hot. But actually when I tried it, this fragrance is actually quite refreshing in a way. It's quite a fragrance of contrast. So it's got a very fresh pink rose to begin with and also quite a bitter black tea note. So it's quite a refreshing beginning to this fragrance. Then as it dries, it becomes warmer and more powdery. So I think that's the amber making it feel a little bit more powdery with that rose note. And ultimately throughout, it, it smells to me like there's sort of something leathery or probably the, maybe with the patchouli and the oud. Maybe that's what's making me think there's sort of a very light leather here. The oud itself is just so background, it's so gentle, but it just has a really nice kind of warm fuzziness to the, to the rest of the fragrance. It's really a very unexpected oud patchouli rose for me. A lot of the other kind of oud patchouli roses, and okay, I've only really tried very, very cheap oud in the past. They just have a very certain smell about them. There's a very particular smell to that kind of trio of notes. And I wouldn't have said that this fragrance really goes down that line. I think it's quite a different fragrance from what you would normally expect. I think also the thing I like about this fragrance is that it makes me think of booze. So it really reminds me of wood soap barrels, basically. Things that have had spirits in them. To me, this smells a bit like a wooden barrel that's been soaked with bourbon whiskey. I drink single malt whiskey that's been matured in bourbon barrels. And to me, this fragrance really makes me think of those single malt whiskies for some reason. I'm really looking forward to wearing this fragrance in autumn because I think even though I have worn it in summer, I think that this fragrance is going to shine best at this time of year. This fragrance is something that really does last the whole day and it does project as well. I have had a compliment on this fragrance already, even though I've only worn it with other people around maybe two or three times. So I think, you know, it's something that people can definitely smell on you. And even though it's quite a subtle fragrance, it is a distinctive fragrance. That's a Rose 4 by Floris. So the next fragrance is also along that fresh and spicy route. And it's something that I've just been really enjoying in fragrances recently, I think. And I remember when I was trying to choose which fragrance of this line to buy, and I just couldn't decide because I like the whole Eau de Merveille line. And in the end, I went for Ombre de Merveille. And I chose this one because it's just a very distinctive fragrance. I've never really smelled anything like this. And I think it's really the amber in this fragrance that makes it just so distinctive. So to me, this smells like a flat, but fresh, spicy Coca-Cola. I know that sounds really odd, but that's really the best way I can describe this fragrance. And I know that's a bit of a cop out because if you look at the notes, you don't really expect this fragrance to smell like that, but that's really how it does smell. I think this fragrance is something that is really long lasting and it's something that is actually quite strong. It's something that I don't really tend to spray more than two or three sprays of because it can become overwhelming. And actually, I think of the rest of this line, this is probably one of the more longer lasting of the, the fragrances in that line. I think this fragrance strikes me as something that I would also really love to smell on my husband. I think this is definitely something to share. So I'm not really sure exactly why I really like this fragrance other than that fresh spicy feel. I think spicy is generally something you think of as something quite dry, something quite hot. This fragrance isn't dry and hot. This fragrance is cool and cool and spicy, cool and fresh. And I think that's why I enjoy it so much. But it does still have that kind of resinous feel that I think is just appropriate for this time of year. So that's um, Ombre de Merveille 
by Hermes. So the next fragrance is one from Miller Harris and I was obsessed with Found at Dusk over the summer so I wanted to try another one and see whether lightning would strike twice. And I have to say this was not love at first sniff at all but I really do enjoy it now and I'm quite pleased with that because I was worried that I'd wasted my money. But this one is called Viola Ida by Miller Harris so definitely not a safe blind buy as I've proven. But this one is quite a lipsticky powdery kind of fragrance, it's one of those. But really the overarching note to begin with is carrot seed. So if you haven't experienced carrot seed in fragrances, one that you can go and smell that does have carrot seed in it is Iris Goddess. And that fragrance to me in the beginning smells a bit like um, the bean bags that you throw around in primary school when you're learning to throw. It's an almost kind of dry earth, kind of dry beans kind of smell. It's something that smells a bit like a vegetable almost, a, a, a really scrubbed dry vegetable. And it's something that I think can be quite off-putting to a lot of people, the amount of carrot seed in this fragrance. And it does take a while to settle down. But when it does settle down, it becomes quite a, a powdery and um, vanilla fragrance, basically. It's a powdery vanilla, but with a vegetal edge. And it is quite vintage smelling. I think this one's definitely a mood for me. I'm someone who, who does really like vintage clothing. And so I do have those kind of vintage moods occasionally. And this fragrance really fits with me wearing vintage clothing. I think this is one that reminds me of the inside of vintage handbags. It's got that kind of dropped makeup, um, powder compacts kind of feel about it. I think this one is, is quite long lasting, but it doesn't really project much. It, it, it does feel like it's enveloping you though. It feels like it's a real capsule of scent that you, you're sitting in. And it feels like it's, it's wrapping you up against the cold, like, like a scarf or something. It's a good fragrance for this time of year because that's what you want, isn't it? It's, you want something that's going to stick around. It does stick close to the skin, but it definitely does stick around. So, yeah, not a safe blind buy, but Violet Ida by Miller Harris is my vintage autumn fragrance. So the next fragrance is one from Kayali and it's a fragrance that I've seen a few people declutter recently and actually I think this is one of my favourites of the Kayali fragrances that I own. I think I like it just because it lasts a bit longer and you can wear it on its own and not worry about it fading throughout the day. It really does have quite good longevity for a Kayali fragrance and I just have it in this little mini. So it's Kayali Invite Only Amber 23. So this fragrance starts out as a little bit of a Dr Pepper kind of feel. It's got a bit of a big red chewing gum kind of feel. It's definitely one of the more spicier cinnamon notes. It's not really a powdery cinnamon, it's a spicy cinnamon. As it dries, it becomes less prominent, that cinnamon. And actually the cherry begins to come through. The cherry you get a little bit later. And the cherry stays all the way down into the, the far dry down. The cherry is more of a sweet cherry. It's more like a, a glacé, a deep, dark glacé cherry. It's something that is, is not really that natural, I would say, the cherry in this fragrance. But it still is delicious. And really, the overarching note in this fragrance is really the amber. The amber is the thing that really stands out. And the amber here, I think, adds to that Dr Pepper vibe. It sort of smells a bit like a cherry Dr Pepper, this fragrance. This fragrance is also slightly smoky somehow and sweet and warm. I think this feels very much like something I would want to wear next to a fire. It feels very comforting, very cosy. And actually there's tobacco in this fragrance as well. And for me, that comes and goes. Sometimes I wear it and all I can smell is the tobacco. And then other times I wear it and I can't smell it at all. And I find that really confusing. Um, the last couple of times I've, I've, I've worn this, I've got very much more of the cherry than the tobacco. But the first couple of times that I wore this, I got very much more the tobacco than the cherry. So go figure. I think really the reason that I, I like this fragrance is because of that cherry and also in the dry down there's also honey and I absolutely adore honey. I love eating honey and it's really subtle but it's there and I also really like this fragrance because it smells to me a little bit like a bourbon whiskey and I absolutely adore whiskies and I don't mind smelling like a whiskey. I think this one's just a little bit different and it really does stand out and that's probably why it has a very mixed reaction to it. So that's Invite Only 23. By Kaali. So the next one is a little bit of autumnal fun and it's one that I really wasn't sure about when I first bought it but actually I've been wearing it a little bit and I've really warmed to it and that is Agent Provocateur's Fatale Entense. So Fatale Entense is, is famous for having a chilly note in it and actually 
it is quite a spicy fragrance, but it's it's not it's not really like you know crazy hot or too much. The spiciness in this fragrance makes me think of ginger nut biscuits, and that's probably why I'm enjoying it. It's a little bit drier than a ginger nut biscuit, though. It's not quite so buttery as a ginger nut biscuit. It's, so it's that very hot, gingery smell, but along with a very sweet and smooth licorice as well in this fragrance. As well, there's some kind of nondescript fruitiness to it, a berry fruitiness. And to me, it makes me think of lip balms. It makes me think of vinyl. There's a vinyl kind of almost plasticky smell to this fragrance. That could turn people off, but I think that is kind of a fun aspect of this fragrance. It's something that's quite short-lived, but it does definitely project really quite quite a lot, actually, when you first spray it. And I think it's something just for a fun night out, a couple of hours, you know, that, that's all really good, you're going to get out of this fragrance. But it just is a very interesting fragrance, and it's something that really makes me think of this time of year because of, you know, that sweet aspect to it, that sweet, spicy aspect to it. It makes me think of bonfire night, it makes me think of Halloween. It's definitely got that kind of feel about it. So that's Agent Provocateur Fatal Entense. So the next fragrance is one from a little indie house called Good Solomon and it's called Cadren. So this fragrance I was gifted by Andreas here on YouTube. And I think of Andreas every time I wear this fragrance because I know he loves mint in fragrances and this has mint in it. So this one is a cool, fresh, slightly spicy fragrance. Again, I seem to be on a trend here. And this one is a, a minty cardamom, slightly gingery, so a little bit of heat, but, but not too much, slightly gingery uh, fragrance with a fuzzy jasmine note in the dry down. And there's also a bit of musk in the dry down as well. I think this one really is quite a linear fragrance. It makes me think of, of lemongrass in a way. I think probably because of the ginger and the mint notes sort of crossing over and confusing me. It's quite a dry fragrance. It makes me think of also those seeds you get in Indian restaurants that are coated in the, that sugar coating. When you have those as breath fresheners in Indian restaurants when you've had an Indian meal, that's what this fragrance makes me think of. It is those kind of little spicy but sweet little things that you eat. It also makes me think of fairgrounds. Some, somewhat inexplicably, it makes me think of fairgrounds. And I've been trying to think why, why it reminds me of fairgrounds. It's because this fragrance makes me think of sticks of rock because of the mintiness and that sort of slightly spicy feel to it and that cooling sensation that you get from this fragrance. I think that's probably why I think of fairgrounds. And it's just a very nice balance between that sort of sweet and spicy and fresh and the herbal and floral. And I have had people ask me what I'm wearing because it is quite distinctive and clearly can, people can smell it on you, so it must project. And I'd say it probably lasts about five hours on me, maybe, and then I have to reapply. But I don't mind re reapplying once in a day. That's fine. I just don't like things that last like a couple of hours and then they're gone. That, I find that annoying. But this one isn't one of those. So that's um, Good Solomon's Cadren. So the next fragrance is one I bought after seeing Ruby Zion talk about this fragrance and she was saying that it's a very nostalgic fragrance for her and she just described it in a way that made me want to try it. So I sought it out and here it is. So without doubt this is one of the weirdest looking fragrances I've ever seen. Um, I don't know whether any of you know what this is. Um, so this is Ultraviolet by Paco Rabanne. So if you open it up uh, you then get this kind of UFO looking little fragrance bottle it's seriously weird you know looks like a little alien doesn't it the black pepper is really quite strong to begin with it's quite spicy and there's also a bit of a fuzzy rose note as well at the beginning of the fragrance as it begins to dry it still retains a bit of spiciness but the spiciness somehow changes from the black pepper it's not as harsh as the black pepper is at the beginning and it transforms more into a, a fuzzy violet fragrance but there is an underlying fruitiness to this fragrance as well. So there's also apricot in this fragrance and that becomes more prominent when the fragrance dries down. It's a warm, fuzzy violet fragrance. So it's definitely something that's more appropriate for the winter than the summer or the spring. The base of this fragrance, along with the violet, is a powdery vanilla amber patchouli. And actually, when I first smelt this, I thought to myself that the amber and the patchouli in this fragrance really reminded me of the amber and patchouli that's in Midnight Poison. And I went away and I looked it up and actually they're the same perfumer. So maybe there's something in that. But 
I suppose they're from around a similar time. This came out in 1999, so maybe maybe there is something in that. Maybe they were using very similar ingredients for these two fragrances. But I just thought that was interesting. So this one is just a very comforting fragrance to me. It's something that I imagine myself watching a millennial film like Clueless or something on a sofa snuggling up to someone. But I think ultimately this fragrance was probably something for clubbing. It's something, you know, very traditionally Packer Rabanne, something very loud. Uh, it is very loud. It's it's a very strong fragrance and it's quite long lasting as well. I don't really enjoy a lot of Packer Rabanne fragrances. I think really the only other one that I enjoy is Pure Excess, but I really do like this fragrance. And I think that's probably because of the fuzzy violet in it. So yeah, if you like violets too, then check out Ultraviolet by Pekka Rabanne. So the next fragrance is one that really does also remind me of Midnight Poison in some ways. And it's definitely a vibe of Midnight Poison rather than the dupe of Midnight Poison. But I think this is probably the closest I have to something that smells a little bit like Dior's Midnight Poison. And this one is KVD's Sinner. So this fragrance is actually a plum based fragrance, but it's more of a, a, a powdery plum than a, than a boozy plum. It's not something that really ever gets to the boozy point of plum. I think this one really does have quite a prominent patchouli note, and I think that's really why I think of Midnight Poison. I think also the, the other main note in this fragrance is jasmine. And if you know those three notes, then that's really how this fragrance smells. It's not really much more complicated than that. It's one that doesn't really last that long on me. I'd have to reapply. But it is something you can wear for going out. It does project quite a bit. And ultimately, not just because of the bottle, but also because of how it smells. I think this one's going to be my Halloween fragrance. It just has a bit of a Halloween-y feel about it. I don't know. It could be this one. It could be Le Petit Rouge Noir Black Perfecto. I'm not sure. We'll see. So this is Sinner by Kat Von D. So going back to tobacco and also sticking with the cheaper end of the fragrance market, I'm going to highlight one that I think is probably one of the best cheap fragrances I've ever smelt and this is one I bought last year and it's Nirvana Amethyst so this fragrance I remember when I was buying it I didn't know which to get from Bourbon, Black and Amethyst and actually reading reviews this seemed to be the one that most people enjoyed out of the three so I went with this one and I really wasn't disappointed so this is a tobacco based fragrance and it's a really creamy sweet tobacco woody vanilla kind of fragrance it doesn't last the whole day, you have to reapply, but honestly, for how good this is, I just don't care. It, it's just delicious, and it's so appropriate for this time of year. It just smells woody and sweet, and definitely one that I would wear going out. It's it's just beautiful. I think it does project a little bit, but it, is, it isn't a loud fragrance. It isn't something that's beast mode, but it is just delicious. So that's what I'm going to be wearing this autumn, Nirvana Amethyst. So going back to Kaali, we're just going to have some crowd pleasers now and I'm going to go for the biggest crowd pleasing fragrance of all, which is a vanilla fragrance and that is Vanilla 28. So I don't think I've really seen many people say they don't like this one. I think, you know, it's vanilla. How wrong can you go? This is a slightly different vanilla in a way because it's deep and smooth and it's also a little bit caramelised in a way. It smells almost a little bit like a cake's cord. If I smelt this in the air and my husband was making a cake, I'd be telling him to check the oven because it smells like that. It smells like the point at which the cake is cooked, but not burnt, if you know what I mean. That kind of caramelised sugar kind of smell. In fact, my husband actually says that I smell of cake when I wear this fragrance. So it's just a vanilla thing, isn't it? Smelling of cake. It's just something that people associate with vanilla a lot. I think, you know, you can't really say too much about this fragrance. It, it's not that complicated. I think the only thing that I'd say about it is that you can smell the vanilla orchid at points in this fragrance, but it's not to the extent that you can smell the vanilla orchid like in fragrances like Orchidée Vanille. It's not quite that floral as Orchidée Vanille, but you definitely can smell the vanilla orchid at points. This is a warm, inviting fragrance, and whilst it doesn't last eternally, it's really, you know, quite a skin scent from a couple of hours in, and it's probably gone completely on me within about five hours. It is meant to be a layering fragrance, so I'll let them off on that one. But yeah, it does annoy me slightly, the lasting power on this fragrance. I won this one back in the spring, and I just haven't had like that wintry season or the autumnal season to enjoy this one. But I think I will be reaching for this one a lot more in the autumn and winter, and I really can't wait to try this out with different things. So that's Kiali's Vanilla 28. So the final fragrance I want to talk about today is one that I've seen Joss talk about and I've also seen Chris from the Perfume Nest talk about and probably a few other people too actually 
And this is one that I have, I've had for quite a while and I managed to miss it out of my collection video and I apologise for that because it's one that I should have talked about. And it's Mercedes Benz Club Black. So this fragrance is one of those that has been really hyped on YouTube and has been quite difficult to find actually, I think, from a lot of people. But I've seen it in a couple of places recently. So I've seen this in House of Fraser and I got mine from House of Fraser and it was only £22 for 100ml in House of Fraser. I've also seen it in Superdrug. I think in Superdrug it was more like £40, £45. But yeah, if you're interested, it is still available. It is still around in the UK at least. It's a it's a vanilla fragrance again, but it is slightly different to the Kaali. So it's it's less smooth than the Kaali for a start. It does have ambroxan in it and you can tell that it has ambroxan. It does have a slightly grainier texture compared to the Kaali. Also, this one, I would say it's very slightly smoky, a little bit nutty, definitely more citrusy than the Kaali. And it's just a little bit lighter than the Kaali, but just longer lasting. I think this is, if you if you oversprayed it, it would be quite a deep vanilla fragrance. But I don't think I really want to overspray it because of the ambroxan in this fragrance. I think this one is actually marketed to men and I, I really don't see why you would, well, I don't really see why you would do that full stop in fragrance, really. I think fragrance should be personal choice, shouldn't it? You shouldn't be limited on particular notes. But ultimately, with vanilla in particular, vanilla is a universally appealing note. Why would you limit your your marketing of a fragrance to 50% of the population? It seems ludicrous to me. I think if you're a woman watching this and thinking, I, I don't want to wear a, a fragrance that's marketed to men, I think this is probably the least male, masculine, heavy, whatever else concept of masculine fragrance you have out there. I think I've definitely smelt women's designer fragrances that I thought, wow, I wouldn't wear that compared with this one. This is really quite a gentle fragrance. And I think actually it is delicious on a man too. I've, I've sprayed this on my husband with his permission, not just randomly. And he did smell absolutely amazing, this fragrance. So I think this is something that most people are going to smell good in. The on this is quite good. It's not something that's beastly. It's not something that's going to make you self-conscious, but it, people can smell it. It's quite a soft smelling vanilla fragrance. It's not something harsh or, or chemical. And I would also say that it's something that really does last a long time. I've actually showered and still been able to smell this fragrance after scrubbing my skin. So it's something that, that really is a very long lasting fragrance. So this one I got for £22, as I've said, I think if you do see it in a shop for that price, um, I would have no qualms about buying it. I think it's quite a safe blind buy. I think as well, it's something that most people will like. So that's Mercedes-Benz Club Black. So that's the final fragrance in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed it, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And also please let me know down below which fragrances you'll be wearing this autumn. I'd really love to know what your suggestions are. And thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.